I just thought I'd um, show you this little piezo sensor that I bought a while back. I bought a couple of these at the time, they were cheap enough. These are, um, they're classified as a vibration sensor. They have a, a reed here with a, uh, a bit of ballast on the end there. And any movement in this direction, up and down, will generate a voltage. It's just got our two pins here. I've um, created a custom lead where I've just attached this so I can connect it to my scope or meter. Obviously the scope's going to be a little bit easier. But, um, finally got the opportunity to play with them a while back. There's, um, I had a Toyota Celica come in. It came in for a, a drivability complaint which turned out to be some leaking ca electrolytic capacitors on the PCM board. So, um, that was resolved, but while it was here, the customer asked me about a vibration that it had. It's a 2.2 litre um, Celica with an automatic in it. And when it was in gear, vibration was quite bad. It had shuttered all the way up through the steering column, and the steering wheel had quite a quite a vibration in it. And the, 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 all the, re the vibration was so bad. Looking through the the, the side mirrors or the the rear view mirror, uh, the image through the mirror was just a blur, it was vibrating so badly. So it was a good opportunity for me to try these little things. So all, all I did was attach my leads, made up a, a custom lead, and it was a bit bit crude, but I, I, I just put a dog clip on the end of it, so I had a, a way to attach it to any point on the vehicle. And um, so what I did, uh, I ran the vehicle at idle, and the first thing I did was attached attached the little piezo sensor to the side mirror. And you can see here I've vibration is how it started out here with, with our vibr this has uh, taken over quite a, a considerable length of time. And you can see here that um, as I jacked the vehicle up, the engine up I should say, off the, off uh, off the mounts. Uh, the mounts were all still done up. I didn't didn't loosen any bolts, but as as I jacked the engine up and took the weight, supported the weight, the vibration reduced. You can almost actually see the jacking events if you look real closely. You can almost see each each pump of the jack um, until it got down to its lowest vibration, and then as I slowly let the jack back again, you can see the vibration increased again. I just thought that was interesting. So. Uh, the, uh, to give a bit more of the story, the vehicle had been to a, a shop um, quite a while before I saw it to have a timing belt done. And the comp customer complained that the vibration started after that timing belt was done. They took it back to the shop a couple of times and uh, the, the shop confirmed that the timing was indeed still correct. And after a, a couple of... Uh, of return visits from the customer, I think the customer just finally quit and gave up asking because nothing was getting done. And I, I, I think at that stage that the shop really didn't know where else to go. The, the timing belt, uh, the timing was confirmed to be fine. So they, I think they were a little, a little lost. Uh, it was dismissed by the shop saying that it's that these engines were notorious for vibrations was one of the one of the replies that the, the customer received. Um, but they had it in them. They, they felt, they've owned the vehicle for a long time and they felt that the vibration had increased after the timing belt was, was done. So. so the next thing I did was, um, I did actually, on the subject of, of timing, I, I did actually pull out the pressure transducer. I've got, a, I've got the Pico WPS and... Um, I actually pulled the timing out, uh, the transducer out, and just checked the timing. And our, our cam timing was spot on. There was no problems with the cam timing. And our ignition timing was fine too. Sometimes it, it sort of actually had that feel of retarded timing. Um, sometimes when you retard the ignition timing greatly, you get that real, that real shudder through the vehicle. Uh, the engine almost has a docile sort of a feel and sound to it. But the engine actually had plenty of power ran really well after the new ECU was fitted, um, but it just had this, this terrible vibration. So we knew our 
our cam and our ignition timing were fine. And this sort of proved that it, that, that wasn't an internal problem. By, by jacking the engine up, we were able to reduce the vibration greatly. So it suggested that our problem was to do with the mount mounting. So my next step was uh, I figured since since it happened according to the customer, it had happened after the timing belt. I thought I'll I'll attach this piezo sensor to an engine hook. So I grabbed an engine hook on the top of the on the head and clipped the piezo to that and. I thought this was quite interesting. Um, the sensor is so sensitive that it was actually able to pick up combustion events. You can see here, it's a little blurry here because we've still got our vibration going on and this, these lumps here would equate to being the, the vibration that we're, we're feeling most likely. Um, so possibly, that's probably a bit of an assumption for me to make there, but um, you'll see what I mean as I move along here. But these, these peaks here are actually combustion events, and I'll prove that in a second. I can show you that measure them out. So if we move along here, you can see some of these are, are quite quite large in, in, in amplitude. Um, having a bit of problems with this software today, it's, for some reason it tends to want to have a little bit of a, a sleep occasionally. It doesn't move to the next page. So what I did was I... Um, I grabbed a small pry bar, just my little short one, and just poked it underneath the engine mount at the timing cover. Since the timing cover, uh, the mount has to be removed to access the belt. So I thought we'll start with the one that, that's most likely been disturbed at the time that the, that the belt was done. So if we move along here a little bit more, you'll see the point where I actually got under there with the lever and, and raised it up. Yeah. You can see it's very very messed up looking pattern here and then as soon as I raise it up it was ever so slightly I didn't have to put much leverage or much effort on the pry bar at all and you can see here how clear the combustion events become so all of the vibration from the engine that was, that was hiding or disguising that has, has almost been eliminated and all we're left with is just the pure pure combustion events and, and no more or almost, almost no harshness, and they are combustion events. I'll just prove that here. If we grab a, a lump there, so that'll be we'll say one, three, four, two. So there's our 720 degrees. So if we take that back to one crankshaft revolution, you can see here she was idling at about 740 RPM. So that proves that these these humps we, we're seeing here are indeed the piezo sensor picking up those those combustion events. I thought that was pretty 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 good, pretty amazing actually to think it's such a sensitive little sensor that it could pick up something like that. And we'll see here as I as I let go of the of the, the pry bar, she goes back to a, a jumbled mess. And I'll move along a bit more and you can see I've lifted it back up again and back down again. So uh, it proved that this this engine mount here was was interfering with the the smoothness of that engine. So the fix was I replaced the engine mount at the timing cover, plus I also did the one at the back of the engine near the firewall because it was getting getting a little soft. So I did the pair of those and we ended up with no more vibration. It actually improved it greatly. But I just thought this was interesting. There are several reasons that we were able to identify the vibration easy enough by using it. But also that these things are so sensitive that they're actually picking up those combustion events. Yeah. So there you go. I just thought that was interesting with all the noise, vibration and harshness that's going on these days with their analysis tools that are coming out for it and manufacturers trying to address it. I just thought this was a, a quick, cheap and easy way to, to, to perform a test. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you think of that?